So there are different formats uh, of bill of materials. We will discuss four here. The first one is product tree. So it could be single level uh, tree or multi-level. We have indented bill of material. We have summarized bill of material. And finally, we have modular bill of material. So first we will discuss product tree. The most basic representation of the product structure is the product tree. It's a graphical or tree representation of the bill of material. The product tree clearly illustrates the structural relationship of the parent item and all the components needed to build it. So uh, it, it shows the structural relationship of the parent that is actually the assembly. So assembly or sub-assembly is also sometimes called parent and all the components that are needed to build it. The simple pictorial nature of the product tree makes it an ideal way to examine the product structure for evaluation, teaching, and testing. So practically, it is not very commonly used, uh, especially for very complex products, but uh, at least in books or for simple products that have maybe four or five levels, uh, then it is very useful. So I will explain what is meant by the levels. But if there are too many levels or there are too many components, then this is not a preferred method. And practically for complex products in the industries, it is uh, generally not used. But for simple products or for training or instruction purposes, it can be very useful. So the product tree can be viewed as either a single level bill or multi-level bill of material. Single level or multi-level. So first we will discuss what is a single level product tree. In a single level bill, only the items that are directly used in the production of the parent are shown. So here is a very simple example of a personal computer. So it has a screen, two casings, a keyboard, a cover, and a hardware kit. So they are required to make the final personal computer. Now, it is called a single level because after the final product, only one level is shown, one level of the sub-assemblies or components. So, in other words, the materials that are used to make the final computer are shown. So, the personal computer is the parent and the screen, casing, keyboard, cover and hardware kit constitute the components needed in the assembly. The numerical value, these values, one, and two and so on, these values in the parenthesis represent the quantity of each of the component items required to make one unit of the parent. So simply in this case, to make a personal computer, we need one screen, two casings, one keyboard, one cover and a hardware kit. And there is only one level, this level after the parent or the final assembly or the sub-assembly that directly make the personal computer are shown, their sub-components are not shown. So this is a single level bill of material. So of course, this uh, keyboard may have further some uh, sub-components, but they are not shown here. Or hardware kit may have further hardware items, so they are not shown. So we have stopped at the first level. So this is called a single level bill. Then we have a multi-level bill of material where all parents and sub-assemblies are displayed. So we have gone two steps ahead as compared to the previous uh, bill of material that was shown on the previous slide. So apart from this first level, we are having uh, their sub-components as well. So the screen needs one blank and one casing to be built. Keyboard further has a keys kit and a blank board and a blank board further needs three side boards and one front board. So in this case, we are having three levels. So how there are three actually, the top one is called level zero, the final assembly. Then we are having level one components or materials or sub assemblies, then we have level two, and then we have level three. So in the bill of material shown, one keyboard is required to build one personal computer. <clears throat> so this one is showing that we need one keyboard to make one personal computer. 
However, the keyboard itself is a sub-assembly that is composed of keys, kit, and blank board. So this keyboard further has uh, two components. <clears throat> so they are the keys, kit, and blank board. So therefore, the keyboard, this keyboard, is also a parent that must be produced, invented, and issued when a personal computer is built. So in, in simple words, we need a keyboard in order to have a personal computer. But in order to have a keyboard, we need these two things, the keys kit and blank board in order for the keyboard to be built. And similarly, uh, for this blank board, we need three side boards and one front board in order to make this blank board. So uh, this is multi-level bill of material. And from here, you can get an idea of the sequence of steps uh, to make this personal computer. So first we need the lowest level item. So this was level three. So this was the lowest level in this case. So if we start from scratch, of course, we are assuming that we are starting from scratch. So first we need to build the side boards and the front board so that we can have this blank board. And we need to have these four things the blank, the casing, the keys kit, and of course this uh, a blank board. Let me simplify it actually. We need these two things, the blank and the casing in order for the screen to be made and we need keys and blank board in order for the keyboard to be made. But in order to start the final assembly that is joining these five components together, we need these four components to be available because if any one of them is missing, we cannot build the final computer. For example, if the casing is missing, we cannot build the screen. And if we don't have the screen, we cannot make the personal computer. So we need these two plus these two in order to make screen and keyboard respectively. And once we have uh, these one, two, three, four, and five sub-assemblies or the components, then we can make the personal computer. So in a way, you can say that uh, from the bill of material shown in the form of a product tree, multi-level bill of material, we not only know the list of the components and the material that are required, so they are obvious. Secondly, we know the quantities of each of them required. And thirdly, in this case, we also know the sequence of production. We don't know, of course, many details about the production, but we can have a fair idea of the sequence of production steps that are required. So again, first we need the lowest level component, then upper level, level one, and finally we can have the uh, finished product. So that is a big benefit of multi-level bill of material. So it is a good tool to visualize actually not only the quantities and the components and the quantities, but also the relationship of the uh, different components. So just to re-emphasize that we know that these two uh, components are required to make this thing and these two are required to make this. So there is a good structural relationship that a multi-level bill of material shows. Now there is an important question that whether it is better to store product structure as a single level or multi-level bills of material in your ERP or some other software. Uh, now, what does this question mean? This product structure could be saved as multi, uh, multiple single level bills of material. So for example, first bill of material could be this, that we have already seen, right? So this is one bill of material that could define the personal computer the final product. We could have a second separate single level bill of material for screen, right? Another single level bill of material for keyboard and yet another single bill of material for blank board. So we could have four single level bill of materials instead of having this one multi-level bill of material that is shown on the screen, we could have four separate single level bill of materials, one for personal computer, one for screen, one for keyboard, and another for blank board. So is it better to have a single bill of material like the one shown, or it would have been better to have four 
single level bill of material. So generally speaking, which of these two options is better? So it is better to store information describing the product structure as a single level bill. If you are defining your product structure for the ERP software, so it is recommended to store information as a single level bill. A series of single level bills is needed to completely define a product. So a product structure begins as single level bills. It is recommended. It is the responsibility of manufacturing engineering to link these bill of materials in order to establish the structure for each assembly. Now we can then, of course, build the multi-level bill of material by grouping single levels bill of materials. So first we define the single level bill of materials for each of the component that has some subcomponents. And then we can group single level bills of material to make the multi-level bill of material as required. So why, why it is better? Single level product structures can be used as components in multiple assemblies. So for example, if you are, uh, let's continue with the same example. So for example, the keyboard assembly can be used on all companies' personal computers. So for example, you have defined the keyboard assembly as a single level bill of material separately. Now you have say uh, different personal computers that you are building and say there are 20 types of personal computer that you are building. Now, if you are defining each of the products as multi-level bill of material, then you will be having a separate bill of material for each of the personal computers. And for each of the personal computers, you will have to define the keyboard assembly separately. Same assembly will have, will have to be defined again and again, assuming that this is the same keyboard assembly. But if you have defined keyboard assembly as a separate single level bill of material, you have to simply retrieve that keyboard assembly definition for each of the personal computers. Even if you if we have a look at it in, in a different perspective that this keyboard assembly was being used in all these 20 personal computers and we change the design of the keyboard assembly. Now you have to change the definition of keyboard assembly in each of the 20 models. But if you had a separate definition of the keyboard assembly and you were retrieving it, you have to make changes in that, uh, what we call master file or master definition. And the same change could apply in all of the 20 personal computers. So this is one benefit of using single level bill of material. Secondly, once you are defining the keyboard assembly, for example, in this case, or each of the 20 personal computers, you are actually duplicating the records. You are defining the same product 20 times. So it is requiring redundant effort as well. The number of records and the file size will also reduce if you are having single level uh, definitions. So, you will have small, relatively more number of files, but small sized files. And updating, as I mentioned, that if you are changing the design of uh, uh, one of the component that is used in many services, you will have to update it at one place instead of doing it multiple times. So that is the re these are the reasons why single level bills are recommended. Now, if you have any argument, you can, you can have it and we can discuss it.